Today, I'm going to show you how to speed paint an entire army's worth of scenic bases. Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. On this glorious Friday, I am going to show you something a little bit new, not entirely new. You guys have seen me work on bases before, but here in the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California, I'm going to show you how to speed paint an entire army's worth of secret weapon miniature bases. These are runic mountains. My main commissioner, Optimus Stein, he has come in. He has brought the order down from on high. He has said, we're going to put a pin in the Yu Jing because I want to play in the Age of Sigmar campaign. So we're painting dwarves right now. We're get, we only have maybe 10 to 13 days to get this entire commission done. And today is step one, all the bases. So I'm going to show you how to get all the bases lined out before you even get the models built. We're going to show you all the tricks, all the ancients, next level painting tricks. I'm going to show you gloss tech, wash tech, airbrush tech. I'm going to show you it all. Very comprehensive video. I have shown you bases before, but nothing like what I'm about to show you. I want to take a quick second to talk about Patreon and shout out a couple of clutch individuals. I want to shout out my most recent patron, Paul. I also want to shout out all the donators on the Twitch stream. You guys know who you are. If you guys don't know what Patreon is, it is a personal crowdfunding page. It's a way for you guys to interact with me so that I can get a little walking around money so I can keep doing what I do. If you guys don't know what Twitch is, you need to immediately fucking stop doing what you're doing right now and go over to Twitch. Twitch is live stream central. It's basically a TV station. We broadcast at least once a week, usually twice, every Tuesday, and we're getting into a rhythm of also doing a Saturday stream. We are showing you guys some crazy shit. There's no movie magic. It all happens right here in the Beats Lab. Nothing, no special effects, all the mistakes, all the bloopers, everything. It's a live Q&A, and we even source suggestions from the audience. Once I show you guys kind of the idea of something that I'm trying to lay down, I might ask you guys, what do you think I should paint this? Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? It is the most interactive way for us to communicate. So definitely check out Twitch. It is the new heat. Anyway, let's jump right into this tutorial. All right, let's do this thing, guys. We're gonna be painting this big ass runic mountain base from Secret Weapon. We obviously start the show, it's already primed. We're using some of that ancient Chinese technique, some of that army painter primer. This is that cheetah primer. This is like the shadow gray, space wolf gray primer that they have. It's pretty good, I love it. And right out the gate, we're gonna pull white out, some airbrush flow improver, and we're gonna get the airbrush out. That's the Iwata Eclipse, the official airbrush of pimps. And we're gonna just water it down. We're gonna come in with a real thin coat of white. We're not really trying to change what the rocks look like here. What we're actually doing is pre-shading these rocks for a wash. So we don't we don't want the rocks, once we wash them, to be just like so dark it's unmanageable. We want them to have some transitions. We want them to be exciting. So this is a pre-shade. You guys have seen me do it before with other colors like red. Um, and I kind of always do it when I'm going to wash. A model because like I said you just don't want to like just make the model so dark after you're done washing it that it's like has no definition so blasting out those white tips on those rocks and hitting those radios will definitely help a long way with that wash and so what I'm doing here is I'm finding little flat surfaces raised areas you know more centralized areas and I'm just making them bright you know it's not science I'm not a scientist uh, I wouldn't even know where to begin uh, to figure out where these where the light would hit these rocks. I just know that creating exciting transitions is what I like to do with the airbrush. It's kind of like the whole reason I bought an airbrush. Imagine the old days. Of, imagine, just, I mean, already look at it. Like, imagine if you paintbrush that. You know, that would already be nice. But what we're going for on this model is a realistic, more rustic look. Not the showy, bright, uh, super clean, uh, you know, transitions that I'm known for in a lot of my models. I'm just showing you the steps in the beginning and how you can basically take it to that rustic level. We're going to pull out that bloodstone. This is a privateer press color. We're going to mix it up with our flow improver and we're going to rapid fire airbrush this brown into where all the, the rubble is, all the gravel, you know, the dirt essentially. 
because you always want to create at least one like level of contrast on a base. It, it would be really cheater for us to just paint all the gravel, all the dirt, all the rocks the same color. That shit would be lazy as hell. I mean, I've done it before in the past uh, in, a, in a pinch, but you really want the dirt and the rocks to be a different color. It will go a long way in like locking that effect down. So we're just going to get that bloodstone out there. Don't be so over cautious about the overspray back to the rocks because actually it's going to be a fun look to have a little bit of dust essentially from the rocks i mean from the gravel on the rocks so don't overthink it go in there and just there it is just aggressively attack all the little patches of dirt it looks kind of silly right now but bear with me guys i'm gonna this is speed painting 101 i painted all this super quick today it wasn't even a big thing and the, i mean there it is a couple of passes with the bloodstone i want to make sure i hit all the nooks and crannies and before we go into our wash stage, I'm going to grab that uh, Vallejo red. And since I already kind of started off by painting these little spires or these columns brown, it's, I mean, it's so easy. A watery red is going to go right over them and stick perfectly. And I just decided in, in a pinch that I wanted these little columns to be red. I don't know why. Red spoke to me. It's a, it's a fun color. There's a lot of contrast there. Uh, but also it complements the brown. So... Maybe all this brown, you know, gravel and dust is like just ground up, you know, temple columns. You know, who knows? I just know I like it. One extra little color on this base because this is a big base, you know. And this is going to be for the dwarves. They're going to be chilling in, the, in, their, in their runic mountainscape, you know, all happy and peaceful except for all their huge axes and weapons. Obviously, let's attack both columns, the same level of ease, you know, rapid fire. Don't even, don't overthink it. Grab your big brush, big thick strokes. Be careful not to get splatter on any surface when you're going fast like this. That's a, that's a thing that happens all the time. And once you get, you know, all the primary surfaces done, you can grab your detail brush, go in there, make sure to hit all the little channels that you couldn't get with the big flat brush so that you don't get red all over those um, bluish white rocks that we spent all that time airbrushing. That shit sucks. <laughs> and there you go. They're done. We're going to let everything dry. Uh, you want it to be 100% dry before you start washing and seal coating and stuff like that. So we're going to set that down by a window or some shit like a pie. And here's just a quick example. Like, I'm not fucking around. We're doing a whole army. Like, all these bases right here. We're following the same protocol for them. Now we're going to grab the lacquer high gloss, which you can see in that last frame. They were already glossed. We're just going to blast all the bases, get them super glossy, and then we're going to grab the Vallejo wash for dark vehicles. This is almost an ink. This is a very high pigment, um, high fluid uh, wash. I love this wash. It interacts super good with the gloss. It is too dark if you don't use a gloss medium, a, a gloss coat. And because the gloss is in, in play, it's, it's just naturally wicking this wash away from the tall flat surfaces and it's just draining down into all the crevices as fast as it can and you can kind of move the base around in your hand let gravity do the rest it's a solid wash for this effect you will get a good look and you can just literally pile it on every surface this wash is is going to be the first sequence of the linchpin operation of making this rustic base look a lot more realistic and a lot more weathered versus like an unfinished cartoony base which is nothing wrong with I love those bases too in the right context, but we're going for that realistic, rustic, runic mountain, you know, like <laughs> fucking Lord of the Rings movie up in here. And here's all the bases laid out. They're on, the, they're on a bunch of packing tape that I uh, mounted them on this piece of cardboard and they're just gonna all sit there. That's an Asian Chinese tech, uh, technique I'm gonna give you for free. And I'm just gonna go in there, rapid fire, hit them all with the wash too. Uh, I'm showing you here. I'm not gonna worry. I'm not gonna make you watch me wash every single one of them But you are gonna watch me watch a couple of them uh, Different variety and you see here. I'm being careful Making sure to get the rims get it to flow in every nook and cranny This you know, this looks this looks a little boring a little slow, but trust me man like we spent probably total two and a half hours today between filming and painting and we got all these bases done to a great level all that's left now is to put the guys on the base when they're done. So it's not really in the grand scheme of things that big of a deal to get your bases looking this fresh. And obviously one of the keys are that there's no guys standing on these bases. Imagine the nightmare, you know, and a lot of people, they don't agree with me to do them this way. They're like, oh, it'll never stick to the base. Just pin the motherfucker to the base. Like it's fine. And if you don't feel like pinning it, don't feel like pinning it. Super glue, 
turns out it sticks pretty good. Even if it breaks off at one point and takes some paint with it, just glue it back on, dog. Like, whatever. Like, it won't break the second time. Trust me. You'll save a lot more time doing this and then having to glue a guy back on the base once in a while, <laughs> you know? Uh, now we're going to grab the Menoth White base and Orange Brown. And we're going to kind of put these on our palette and we're going to just use them in combo with each other as we start dry brushing the browns in on this uh, really darkened gravel now. And I'm just kind of playing with it. You know, I'm using a little bit of that men off white base coming in there and then, you know, making decisions. I'm deciding I'm not getting enough contrast. So I'm going to slide back out to the orange brown. Uh, but the reason we use uh, men off white instead of actual white is because it's such a more natural color. It looks so much better on scenery. Like if you're trying to dry brush a rock, it's so much better than white. And you can see here, you know, it's coming along. We're getting a lot of transitions here. We're getting a lot of nice, um, just real gritty, like antique look to this. Like this is an old rock now, you know? The dust is flowing and, and it's just exactly what you want to see from a scenic base. Now, like I said, I'm still playing with it. I'm going back and forth between the orange brown and the uh, bone white, essentially, for all intents and purposes. And we're going to just have to start kicking it up a notch here. It's not brown enough for me. So we're gonna go heavy, streaky air, uh, dry brush with the orange brown. Like, not really a dry brush at all. We're basically just, you know, rapid fire dragging pretty still wet paint across the tops here to get some nice streaks of brown mixed in to that gravel. And you're getting a good, you get a good look, you know? And it's, you know, we're letting it blend into the rock faces. So you get that dust look. Like there's a total transition, like a little bit of residue left behind. Maybe it's wet. Maybe it's a little bit of mud. It's nice, you know, it gives you that real natural look as we go through. And, you know, for the most part, I'm feeling pretty good about this, but I want it to be just a little bit more brown. So we're gonna hit it again, one more time, a little bit more aggressive, hit that orange brown, let it flow, let it touch the rocks, you know, give you that natural transition. Like it's nature, man. Like shit just, shit, shit bleeds into each other all the time in nature, you know? And I am now starting to feel a lot happier about this product. Now let's grab that Menoth White out again, clean our brush, and we're gonna start dry brushing the rock. Like I said, you're like, wait, what? You're gonna dry brush this rock with Menoth White base? Trust me, it makes it look like rocks. Like we use, rocks have all sorts of colors in them, right? And white's probably not one of them. So we have a bluish gray, a little bit of a black wash, and now we're gonna dry brush it all with a bone white, essentially. And it's starting to look like a rock that you've seen. You've seen rocks on the ground that look like that. And this also is kind of marbled. Like once, like if you use a bone and a brown and some grays, like it's, it's how you get really natural marble looks uh, to your rocks. So just take it easy, you know, go back and forth, make sure you hit all the ridges, let this met off white base do, do what it do, you know, let it get up in there, let it catch the ridges, you know, let you really want to do a dry brush here this is not a wet dry brush like i was talking before you really want all those deepest recesses to stay as dark as possible that's how you create that contrast how you get that realism and that antique weathered effect and I, now i and i'm also you know inversely are not worried about getting this men of white bleeding back into the rocks uh, or sorry the gravel like it just doesn't matter like it's an organic model you know like this is you know, this is exactly what I was talking about. Like, these are how you find those little tricks, how you marriage that quantity with that quality, and you pump out a great product for the tabletop without breaking your back. I would say the technique is the skill, just being armed with those techniques. And now we're gonna grab the Men of White highlight. And this is gonna be gently applied to the biggest, to the most raised peaks. We're not gonna like kind of, we're not gonna redo everything. We're just gonna find the areas that are most like jagged, most close to us. And we're gonna give them a little bit more dry brush and that's really gonna pop it out. This is a brighter version of the bone white color. And I mean, that is a good looking rock. That is a very natural rock, you know, real, real, very realistic. Exactly what I was hoping for when I started this process. But obviously I've done this a million times before. So I pretty much knew it was gonna happen, but uh, you always get to that like artist mentality where you like start doubting like, wait, did I do it differently last time? Shit, <laughs> you know, this doesn't look that good. But like, that's kind of the process. It looks really weird until it looks good. You know, 
Like I always tell people, like a lot of times when I'm painting armies because of this process, the way I lay things out, they look like shit until they're done and then they look good all of a sudden. You know, things don't even look good to me until they're base, which is why I like doing the bases first. Now we're gonna grab that Scarlet Blood from Game Color and we're gonna start dry brushing it, but more of a wet streaky dry brush back into those red uh, broken temple columns. Whatever they are, I don't know. They got hieroglyphics on them or something. Rune, I guess that's the runic part of the runic mountainscape. And we're just going to get them in there. We're going to try to catch those angles, catch those jagged broken lines, catch those 90 degree corners, and let that highlight, let this red highlight naturally this column, which was basically just red and then a wash. And now we're hitting that red again. And you can see the wash is staying in the deepest uh, cracks and the red is coating all the surfaces. Now, this is a weird ancient Chinese technique, sunny skin tone. We're gonna kind of mix it in a little bit with that with that red, and we're gonna more subtly dry brush it into just the jagged areas, just the edges, kind of avoiding the big flat areas. And this is gonna give you your own natural highlight, a very organic highlight to that red, kind of in theme with the, the natural organic feel of this base. And you can see you're getting a nice, real sharp edge there. Now obviously I've been focusing on this big base, but don't get it twisted, I was also painting the little ones the entire time I was filming this for you guys. There they are, same exact protocol. Dry brushed, every angle exactly the same way, rapid fire these out. I mean, that, some of those rock pieces look like actual, literally real slate rock. You know, it is an easy technique. Once you know the, the system, you can reproduce this on anything. And now all it's left is glue your guys on it, glue your tufts of grass on it, put some leaves on it, you know, paint the rims black like I did on this big piece. You know, and that, that's how you get yourself a nice, realistically, you know, attacked piece of terrain like scenic base like and you can apply this to anything not just a base anyway guys thanks for checking this video out if you like these tutorials check out next level painting on patreon become a patron of the arts today we offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels patreon is paypal and credit card secure so you don't have to worry about that we use 100 percent of the money to improve our process